In my line of work, it can be difficult to tell if the animals that I consider cute are actually cute, or if I've just been exposed to so many Lovecraftian horrors of the invertebrate world that my cuteness spectrum is severely off balance. You tell me. For example, I think that this is the most adorable organism on planet Earth. It's called a velvet worm, Phylum onychophora, a small, soft-bodied, many-legged predator with a secret weapon that will stick with you for a very long time. And hey, while we're on the subject, what is a velvet worm? Why don't we see them more often? And how does such a delicate-looking animal, without claws, jaws, or toxins, capture prey as large as itself? We'll find the answer to all these questions and more as we continue exploring the Tree of Life. The closest living relatives of velvet worms are arthropods and tardigrades. The three phyla are often grouped together into the clade Panarthropoda. We'll take a closer look at the tardigrades next week, and arthropods the week after that. But for now, let's explore what makes Phylum onychophora so very special and so downright bizarre. I mentioned a moment ago that these animals are delicate. So delicate, in fact, that they can only be found in the darkest, warmest, and most humid environments, like tropical caves or rotting logs. The reason this lifestyle is necessary is due to the way that they breathe. Like arthropods, velvet worms breathe through tiny holes called spiracles. Unlike arthropods, they can't close these holes to conserve moisture, so they're constantly at risk of drying out and suffocating. Exposure to sunlight can be a death sentence, much like the stars of my favorite Christmas movie. It's for this reason that velvet worms actively avoid light, which is also why these otherwise charismatic animals are hardly ever seen in zoo or museum collections, as displaying an animal who actively avoids the conditions necessary to see them is a bit counterproductive. The irony is, even with their reliance on moisture, Onychophora is the only phylum in the animal kingdom without a single known aquatic species. However, their existence in the fossil record dates back to the Cambrian period, which tells us that they were once marine animals that have since evolved to be land dwellers. This is the Goldilocks of the invertebrate world an animal that drowns in water and dries out on land, forever living in balance between the two. And this is an example of how evolution actually works, not towards perfection, but rather landing on good enough to survive in its respective niche. Despite this dramatic shift in lifestyle from sea to land, modern velvet worms appear nearly identical to those that existed 500 million years ago, earning them the title of living fossil. Today, around 200 species have been described, but as with all understudied animal groups, the actual number is probably much higher. At first glance, Onychophora appear all but defenseless, lacking the body armor of their arthropod cousins. The outer layer of their body is soft and covered in bumps or tubercles, often with short sensory bristles, giving them their velvety appearance. Their size ranges from one to 20 centimeters long, with one pair of thick antenna and between 13 and 43 pairs of legs, depending on the species. Each leg, called a lobopod, is tipped with a tiny pair of retractable claws, which, along with their mandibles, are the only hard parts on a velvet worm's body. The mandibles are used to cut prey into pieces small enough to be ingested, and prey is any invertebrate that the velvet worm can capture. So this begs the question, how do they capture prey? You may have noticed these two appendages on either side of the mouth, which could easily be confused for eyes. The eyes are actually much smaller and located at the base of the antenna. These, in simple terms, are a pair of high-powered glue guns called oral papilla. Slime glands within the velvet worm's body produce a sticky adhesive glue which shoots out the tips of the oral papilla. The glue can reach targets up to 30 centimeters away with impressive accuracy quickly hardening and immobilizing predator and prey alike. Once their victim is trapped like a Spider-Man villain, the velvet worm slowly eats them alive by injecting them with digestive enzymes and consuming them one small piece at a time. Like I said, cutest animal ever. 
Unfortunately, most of us will never see a velvet worm in person because they require such strict environmental conditions to survive. Next week, however, we're going to meet an animal that's very closely related to velvet worms, but can be found just about everywhere, and can survive circumstances that have earned them the title of toughest animal on Earth, and the only animal capable of surviving the vacuum of space. The tardigrade, Phylum tardigrata. One last thing, since I've neglected to say it for the past forever. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. It helps more than you know, and it's the only way that I'll have a Merry Christmas. Also, follow my social media accounts at Miller's Wildlife to stay up to date on all my wacky animal adventures. I'll see you next Friday, but until then, stay curious, stay connected, and never stop evolving.